guest has spent decades trying to prove one thing, that he is the secret son of Prince Charles and Camilla. 55-year-old Simon Charles Durante Day was uh, put up for adoption after being born in 1966, but he says he has proof that his birth parents are, in fact, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. He joins us now from his home in Brisbane to tell us more. So, good morning, uh, Simon. Good morning. Extraordinary claims. Uh, not the first good time morning. this, is, morning, uh, this has happened to the royal family. Um, but where did this belief start? Well, the belief started um, in 1994. Really, we started looking at who my parents were um, when my first son, Simon, was born. And I said to my wife, um, he had blue eyes, and my wife said, um, you know, well, where did the blue eyes come from? And I said, well, I had blue eyes. And she said, oh, you didn't tell me that before. Uh, and she said, what age did they change? And I said, eight. So she said, what, eight? And that's where it started. Uh, and then when I went to see Nanan in 1998, when she was passing away, and I managed to get a, a small conversation with her while my adoptive mother wasn't around, and I put a, a picture in front of her that was in the newspaper of Charles and Camilla, and I said, is this then? And she said, yes. And, you know, I was already looking at that stage. So your, your, your adopted grandparents used to work for the royal household at the time, and so it's your belief that you were, that your grandparents were sort of entrusted with you because they, they worked with the family? That's, that's correct, Holly. Um, Grandad was a gardener and then was a cook. I, I say in a royal household because that's what I was told. Uh, I'm not sure which one, um, but she, they weren't working in a royal household. There are a couple of things here, obviously, which, um, you know, from this is, this is something you've pursued for a very long time. You believe it profoundly. Uh, looking from the outside, uh, obviously, there's an element of scepticism here because you say that because uh, your adoptive grandparents were Winifred and Ernest Bolden. Ernest received an Imperial Service Award, which is not listed in any records. Um, mm. Can't find that one. Um, and the other thing is, you say Grandad also served with Lord Mountbatten, that you can remember as a child be meeting her, who you assume to be her, uh, in Portsmouth, and uh, a gentleman there with a naval uniform. So. What do you remember of that time and how old were you? Well, how we got on to the visit, I'll, I'll lead up to, the, to that answer. Um, I, I walked out from my, my mum and dad lived in the semi-detached house, which uh, Nana and Granny lived next door. So you used to be able to walk from the one house to the other around the outside. I was walking around to Nana's side one day when I was about five or six and uh, I, I heard Mum say to Nanan, well, uh, Nanan say to Mum, sorry, um, well, the visitations have got to stop. He's going to remember them. And I walked in the door and said, remember what? And, of course, I, I copped a mouthful uh, for talking out of term. But um, I can remember being taken to a house up on Portsdown Hill. Uh, the houses at the time, I've since checked, I, I know this is a fact, were only rented to Ministry of Defence. They were only naval officers in Portsmouth, resident in Portsmouth bases that, that lived there. Uh, I was taken to one of those houses. My parents waited outside. Uh, I went inside. I can remember a lady sitting on the sofa who, in my mind, is about Camilla at the time. Uh, there was a grandfather clock to my right. I was playing on a coffee table with some toys. Uh, and there was a gentleman dressed in a naval uniform to the right of me in front of the grandfather clock. And I can remember him quite clearly saying, well, we're buggered now. Mm. So the, the the other claim that you make as well, and you touched on this briefly at the top of this interview, was about your eye colour changing. And you believe that the royals were so intent on keeping the secret and that you may be recognised by your appearance that they somehow had your eye colour change and they also changed your teeth? I... I, I yeah, the bit that you said at the start there, um, I don't think they had any choice but to do that. It was because of the gossip around Portsmouth at the time. Um, in those days, blue and blue made blue. There was never any inquisition about that. So my optometrist will tell you that one of my lenses is perfectly round and one of them is oval shaped like a football. So uh, rugby football, that would be to you over there. Um, so this is why I have a vision problem. Uh, I, can, I can remember quite clearly the pain. I, I had to walk around for three months in the shadow. Uh, Dad had to remove the 150 watt light bulbs out of the house 
because I couldn't stand the, the, the brightness. So something was done to my eyes. But we so, know so now. That, I mean, that, I that in itself, that is an extraordinary claim that uh, that the royal family. You were what eight at the? How old would you have been when they when they actually allegedly tampered with the colour of your iris? I would have been eight. So uh, eight my mother. So I've you're got a eight, video year, of my mother, so. eight years old, and blue eyes makes. I mean, the the thing is that blue eyes. You know, sort of make, Holly's got blue eyes. I don't think she's made Maybe. any sort of claims on on royal um, sort of descent. Um, so, so I mean, there are lots of people with blue eyes that, that you know that are not royal. And you're actually saying that the and we spoke to someone from the Moorfields Eye Hospital, it's a very prestigious eye hospital here today, who said that they they don't know that procedure. And we're not saying that it couldn't have been done, but it, incredibly dangerous, especially in what would that have been, 19, sort of 1970. Why on earth would, the, would they tamper with a, an eight-year-old's eyes? 1973, 74, that would have been. Um, well, I'm not the one to be asking that question, really. And I don't think it's ordered for necessarily from the royals. Um, the, you know, the, the government's place in this is, is very easily overlooked and other people would like to see the royals be blamed for such a nasty thing. But if you think about why, I'd never do that to my children, ever. Mm. I'm sure you wouldn't do it to yours. But you, so you say why, you were, why would you feel I need to do that? You were conceived in 1965. According to royal commentators, Charles and Camilla didn't actually meet until they were both at a polo match at Windsor Great Park in 1970. So the story goes. I mean, they talk about consistency in Harry's interview, but the royal family's been running off that inconsistency for a long time. I've got the Times newspaper publishing it in 1969. Uh, and this polo rubber polo match goes on until 1974. So the same thing happens with the birthday. Uh, Camilla disappears around 1965. Uh, and, you and, that's and when she was pregnant with you. Um, you, you, you say that another reason why you believe this so strongly as well is because genetically the line goes on and you think your children, one of them in particular, really resembles the Queen. All, all of them do. They I see do. it every we've day. Got, we've got images go here now. We've not day. seen these yet. Let's, let's just have a look and see. You can imagine it's a, it's uh, a stretch. when someone's just dead and you turn around and see that. Well, it's a, it's a stretch. Um, and uh, we've got the Prince Charles one as... Uh, as well. Um, well. Have you ever reached out to any of the royal family to ask them about this? I, I have. I've been in constant communication for, since 2005. I've, I, the pageant inquiry submission that the Metropolitan Police asked me to make was the first sort of official one. Um, since, since then, I've also written to the Queen. I've sent a report to the Queen on corruption in New South Wales. So I haven't just written to the Queen. Mm. I've uh, done my civil duty and reported things that I've seen while I've been travelling down this journey. So you... And you, then, uh, this is a concern for us. You've been to the court before and it get, uh, I think it was in 2018 and it got thrown out. You're going back again now and, uh, and, and you want a DNA test. So what, what, do you think your, what do you think are your chances of success on this one? Pretty high. I, I look, the, the, uh, the it got chucked out theory has just come up in the media. That's not any truth at all. I mean, they said it got kicked out three times. It's only been to court once. That was a pilot test case, if you like. I spent three hours arguing with Justice Forrest in front of the Attorney General and the State Attorney General's department about my rights to do this, what um, the standing of the royals are in, illegally. Um, so, yeah, it was quite extensive. I had to show the kind of evidence that I had and how it needed to be presented before the court. So I'm now at the stage where I can take that and do that. Of course. Simon, it's an absolutely fascinating uh, story. It really is. Thank you for joining us. We're going we're to speak to yeah. Robert now to see what he thinks um, of your claims and whether any of them stand up. He's a royal biographer. Robert Jobson, welcome to you. So you've just listened to his story. What do, what do you think about that? Well, it's a great story. and I think um, he's already appeared on Sunrise and... Australia and it's obviously quite accomplished at telling the story. I mean, I, I, you know, obviously he believes it, and that's uh, part of the difficulty of the of this. I, I personally think, um, well, personally, don't, don't think the date set up. I mean, they didn't actually meet first at that polo match. They were introduced in the flat of um, um, uh, one of, of Camilla's friends, Lucia, and um, they met there, and they, that's when their relationship started, what their friendship was that? started. When was that? that? That was early 1970, so the dates there don't add up. The other thing that slightly worries me, of course, is the, 
I mean, I think you, you, it's not too much. I think I'm a little older than the gentleman, actually. And, you know, Prince Charles was at school at the time. He was 16. I think about the naughtiest thing he was did at Gordonstone, if they let them out, was go and drink a cherry brandy. Um, Camilla was a couple of years older. She was uh, a deputant and um, a very popular girl around town and uh, was being pursued by all the, the all the landed guys around. So, look, you know, it's I've come across this sort of story before in... Many guys, along with when I was working at the Daily Express and other newspapers, when we used to get letters come in with detailed, you know, all of these things about various illegitimate children that are supposed to have existed and Princess Margaret, there was supposed to be a guy, they pursued it for many, many years, um, to no avail and to no, and, it, and the courts threw it out at the end. Um, personally, I must say, I think it's a bit of a stretch, although I, I respect the man, the, the gentleman's um, viewpoint, um, but the photographs to me don't look like anything, none of them look like anything like the, the, the royal family. And also the other thing that really slightly con concerns me is, that, you know, I think um, it suggests there's all sorts of, you know, strange d dark secrets going on, people having eyes changed. Sounds more like a James Bond movie than a, the truth. But I mean, it's, I, obviously he believes it. Although I must say, I, I think, you know, I was told a lot of things by my grand, by the way. I think they said I was related to Horatio Nelson, but it doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> Simon, I mean, <laughs> can I just ask Simon, Simon, what is it that you actually want out of this? Well, before I answer that, we haven't mentioned my teeth and how the teeth got ground down and how I was pinned in the chair with a dentist when I was 15. Um, ask my adopted mother why. Um, what do I want out of this? I want the truth. I want the answers. I've, I've followed this. Where is the proof that's just been said there that this was said in 1970? It's rubbish. It's not rubbish. Hang on a second. I, I let you speak. You, could, you can't, can't say that. You can't say that. And Excuse me. I let you speak. Excuse me. One at a time, Don't guys. One at a time. Simon, Simon, there's no point talking over each other because no one will hear. So, Simon, hang on a second. Um, so well, let's, he just... Uh, it just it, he just, hang on a second, mate. I'll let you speak. Let me speak. You just said I'm talking rubbish. I, I spent uh, over speak. two years. Hang on. All right. OK, carry on. I'm not. The fact that, oh, hang on, there's someone else speaking now. This is this is like Piers Morgan on a wet Wednesday. Right, OK, Look, okay. Let, let, me step, let me step in here. Hold on a second. Right. Uh, Simon, hold on a second. And whoever's shouting in the background, that's pointless because we can't hear that either. So, hold on a second. Robert, if you could just sum up there what your answer, and we'll come back to Simon. Well, number one, he said that was talking rubbish. I spent two years researching the book on Prince Charles, spoke to Prince Charles. My book is rubbish, so I don't need to have a go back at there. Number two is that, frankly, I think that these claims are fanciful. Um, I feel for the guy, but maybe he's adopted by someone else. Maybe he is somebody else's child and they were covering it up. But I don't think it's anything to do with the royal family. All right, that's great. Thank you very much indeed for that. Now, Simon, your I say... I just ain't seeing it, all right? Uh, I don't know who that was. Uh, so, so... Uh, that's my wife. OK, no, that's, that's, that's good. Did you hear what you say? And, and they have a right to know the truth as well.